My name is Randy Bigley. Join me on the podcast right now from Sprang Capital Management. Jim Sprang, good morning, Jim. Good morning. How are you today? I'm doing well. I think we talked about a year ago, didn't we? Yes, and <laughs> it's a mild January, gloomy as usual in Ohio, but at least it it's not cold and snowy. Right, it could very well be cold and snowy. Absolutely. Just wait until tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that's what they say about Ohio if you want to see the you know, Absolutely. Well, the weather changes, wait. Wait, well, 10 minutes, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, so since we talked, has anything really changed in the economy since the last well, year? Well, yes, a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, we spoke in January of last year, and we'd hit a record high in the stock market basically the first week of January. And to be blunt, mm -hmm. it was all downhill from there. Yeah. And again, this is no shock to everybody. This is being driven by the fact that we have inflation mm -hmm. for the first time in 40 years. And we also have rising interest rates from the Federal Reserve, which is the appropriate response to make. But... All of a sudden, that makes car buying and home purchasing and even financing a washer or dryer or something like mm -hmm. that much more expensive. Mm -hmm. It was really interesting. I did some calculations, and I assumed you had to be a 25-year-old adult, mm -hmm. you know, to be in the workforce and stuff to have really experienced inflation mm -hmm. the last time in 1980. So that means you've got to be 65 years old today mm -hmm. before you've ever experienced inflation like we have now. Wow, yeah. So yeah. it's no wonder yeah. it's kind of a shock and painful to people. Right. And I hate to be this way, but I kind of laugh a little bit because, <laughs> yes, we're, we're dealing with 7% inflation right now. But there in the 70s and early 80s, we went 11 years in a row with inflation greater than we have today. No kidding, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. old people... Mm -hmm. Older people, right. <laughs> more seasoned, whatever you wish, right. uh, are certainly more experienced with this than the generations we're dealing with now because they've never had inflation for 40 years. Yeah. And it's quite traumatic to them. Yeah, yeah, wow. So, what can you, is there anything you could do that, uh, that's different now when you go to invest? Is there anything you have to look out for? Uh, well, again, yeah. it's, it, it's your age and your time mm -hmm. frame. Right. I tell people if you're young, just keep investing, keep doing it, close your eyes, you're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. You will look back at the end of your investing career, 60s, 70s, 80s, however old you might be, mm -hmm. and you'll look at this and you'll see this little blip in time and you'll go, oh, I wonder what that was. And yeah. you'll have to actually look to see what the impetus was that your investments did poorly during that time frame. So if you're young, no, no, mm -hmm. nothing changes. You continue exactly with what you're doing. Now, if you're older, all of a sudden things change because mm -hmm. you don't have the time frame to make up for losses and those type things. Number two, because interest rates have been rising, we now have alternatives to stocks uh, such as CDs, money yeah. market funds, these type things that while they might be yielding four, four and a half percent, which is still less than inflation. <laughs> so your purchasing power is actually going to be less. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's the reality. So while we say, oh, what a good investment, you know, put it in cash, that's okay. You're not losing any paper money on paper, but you're losing purchasing power during this time period. But all of a sudden, if you're older, you have mm -hmm. alternatives. But you really need to start to think about, you know, did I have too much risk? Did I enjoy the spoils of five, six really good years in the markets? Because all we did was front load return. Mm -hmm. We had five, six really good years, and now we're paying for that. And the fact that we're giving back some of those gains because trees don't grow the sky. You know, they right. have to they have to have these cautionary moments where you just pull back. Yeah. Do you see things getting better here soon or is it gonna be a while? I don't know the time frame. Mm -hmm. Um I will say this, as the Fed has raised interest rates and we have seen the housing market stop, mm -hmm. which again I'll spin back and I will laughingly say people are just screaming because the thirty year mortgage right now is six point four percent a year. Mm -hmm. In 1980, it peaked at 18.4% a year for interest rates. Yeah. So once again, everything is mm -hmm. relative. So if you think housing is expensive now, I have to laugh and say, you don't know what expensive is. Okay? Right, right. So it's, it's all relative. But anyway, as the Federal Reserve raises interest rates like this, and the housing market contracts, collapses, whatever term you want to use, mm -hmm. because it's just the way it is, um, what's going to happen is every single time that the United States has had inflation over 5%, which is where we are. We've had a recession. Mm -hmm. Now why? Because the Federal Reserve raises interest rates to slow down people's purchasing. Okay. That's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So in that process, what happens is you trip the economy into a recession. Now, you can hear these talking heads on cable TV and this kind of stuff, and I have to laugh. One guy said, oh, uh, my 
algorithm says there's a 76% chance we're going to have a recession. Mm -hmm. I wish he would just follow it up and say, and I have this bottle of snake oil for $9.99 now. 76%, please, please, please. You're either 75, you're 80, whatever, 76%, right. please. But anyway, every time we add inflation over 5%, we've had a recession. Mm -hmm. Why would we bet against the fact that we're going to probably have a recession now? I, every single time previously. Mm -hmm. So why would this be different? So we're probably going to have a recession. Um, when? That's the key. When? I don't know. May, June, middle of the year. You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, right. We're already starting to see layoffs in the tech industry. Interestingly enough, when you see that one of the tech boys lays off 10,000 people or something like that, it's not a big deal because right. tech doesn't employ that many people. Right. Yeah. That's a very, the tech for the, as large as part of the economy as they are, they employ very few people. Mm -hmm. So when you start to see big layoffs at manufacturing and places like this, that's when you'll really start to see the tipping point where we go into a recession. Right now, these discussions from these tech guys, you know, where they're laying off 20,000, 10,000, that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. they're a very small portion of the total employment in the United States. Um, so that, that's kind of where we are on that. But no, we think a recession is coming. Mm -hmm. um, why would we bet against the fact that every single time it's happened before, why would this be any different? So then you shift gears and you begin to ask yourself, well, can we have a shallow recession? Can we have a soft landing? Mm -hmm. These cute little terms that, again, the cable TV boys <laughs> trying to fill airtime right. 24 hours, seven days a week. You know, they start to talk about these things. Is that possible? Sure. Now, what is a shallow recession or a soft landing? Well, it just means that you don't run employment to 11%, mm -hmm. unemployment, excuse me, to 11%. It might rise to five or six, uh, certainly better than 11, but it's certainly worse than three and a half like we are now. You, yeah. you could double it very easily in unemployment. Um, I also have to say, these guys that are talking on TV, they're not gonna lose their jobs, okay? Right. They're, they're not going to lose their jobs. So they can talk about shallow recession all they want to, these type of things. Shallow recession, if you've lost your job and you're behind on your rent mm -hmm. or you can't buy groceries for your kids and those type of things, it's not a shallow recession. Right. Um, it's, it's a brutal recession if you're one of them who's lost their job. So is it possible, conceivable? Of course. Mm -hmm. Anything's possible. Um, what would that mean? Well, that would mean that the Fed just hit the eye of the needle perfect. Mm -hmm. They raised interest rates until people stopped consuming and slowed down inflation to the rate they would like it to be. And then all of a sudden they started to cut interest rates immediately to start to juice the economy back. Mm -hmm. Now, is it possible? Sure, but again, let's be real. We're dealing with a $20 trillion economy. This is not sure something enough. that you stop on right. a dime and change directions and this kind of stuff. So it is absolutely conceivable and possible that we will have a shallow recession, but at the same time, you know, it's all relative. Mm -hmm. you know, it's one of those, the famous, the famous line, when my neighbor loses their job, it's a recession. When I lose my job, it's a depression. <laughs> right. okay? I mean, that's really the way it goes. Yeah. So the last really, okay, shallow, last shallow recession we would have had would have been pandemic driven mm -hmm. there in March when we shut the economy down till June, those type of things, and it recovered incredibly quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay. You almost have to throw that one out because it was so artificial, not artificial because of the need, right. but it was it, it was an imposed type of one. And then immediately when I talk about you flip the switch, well, yeah, you open things back up. So that one's kind of always you know, ab no, abnormal. Mm -hmm. The last really shallow recession we had would have been in the early 1990s when Herbert Walker Bush was president mm -hmm. and Iraq invaded Kuwait and we oil went from I believe it was like twenty one dollars a barrel to maybe forty six dollars a barrel somewhere in there, um, and that recession lasted only like eight or nine months. It was a really rather shallow recession. So that one, so it is possible. And again, it was very explicit what happened when Iraq went into Kuwait. Mm -hmm. The price of oil shot up. Again, oil drives a lot of things you know right. that we have. So it was one of those things, but the minute that it was obvious that you know Iraq was not going to be able to hold on and all those mm -hmm. type of things, oil started to drop. 
you know, yeah. the UN started to take control of Kuwait, get the oil wells going again, even though Saddam Hussein set them all on fire yeah. and this type of stuff. Um, so that was a shallow recession. So it is possible. That one, again, was rather unique in that that was, an ex and that was a political event that did it, those type of things. So, but again, you go back into the 70s and 73, 74, and it was a brutal, mm -hmm. uh, with a capital B, brutal recession. Yeah. Because oil had gone from $1 a barrel to $4 a barrel, oh, yeah. and then to $40 mm -hmm. a barrel. Wow. Now, again, I like to tell people, imagine... We're at eighty dollars a barrel for oil right now. Mm -hmm. Imagine if it goes up forty times, you're paying thirty-two hundred dollars a for a barrel of oil. Wow. Imagine what that does to your economy. Oh yeah. So yeah. the reason we had such a bad economy from seventy-three through nineteen eighty-two was driven by oil. Mm -hmm. It really was. Um, OPEC OPEC started. And OPEC, it's basically an offshoot of what that says that anybody that supports Israel, we're gonna, yeah. we're going to ramp up your price of oil. Yeah. And that's really what it was, 100%. Um, and it was a case of where we had always traditionally supported Israel, and mm -hmm. right, rightfully so. And it was a case of where, you know, well, we paid the price during that time period, but we went through some r 10 tough, tough years of inflation and unemployment and those type of things driven by you can say it was an external event because mm -hmm. somebody just started to play with the commodities that the world runs on. Well, Jim, uh, if someone's interested in your services, what can they do? Well, they can contact us um, at Sprang Capital Management mm -hmm. here in Bucyrus. You can go to our website, sprangcapital.com. Uh, you can you know, look up our phone number, give us a call, set an appointment, come in, chat about what you're doing and what you're not doing. Um, again, young person, can't pound the table enough. If you're employed, you should be doing a Roth IRA because you get tax-free growth. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, for your young person, you need to be looking at a Roth IRA. If you're older, I think you begin to need, I think you at least need to question my asset allocation, okay? Mm -hmm. If you're young, be aggressive, you're fine. You've got 20, 30 years, and this is just a blip in time. Yeah. But if you're older um, and it's painful, you see, you, you, you worry. Um, I mean, I, again, one of these discussions when you're our age, my age, excuse me, um, and you talk with your cohorts, we've all experienced parents in care facilities mm -hmm. and the costs and those things that goes along with it. So it's just one of these factors of life that you deal with. And as we're older, we have more stress and worry about making sure we don't run out of money. So therefore, I think asset allocation becomes critical right now. And there are alternatives now. For the first time, again, interest rates at 0% is a joke. Mm -hmm. Should not be. Should not be. Yes, I know you want to stimulate the economy. Mm -hmm. You want full employment. All those kinds of things. For somebody to say we should take, for an administration of this country to say we should take interest rates to negative, please, stop mm -hmm. it. I mean, yeah. horrible, horrible, horrible. Interest rates should be 4 to 5%. There should be a cost of capital. Mm -hmm. So finally, we are back to more normalized for all time being. Yes, it's painful, but and there's a reason we're trying to get inflation under control because, again, some of these zero interest rates are the reason. I, I mean, let's be realistic. When you could do a 30-year mortgage on a house mm -hmm. for 3% or less, it was free money. Mm -hmm. Free money. Right. So it's no mm -hmm. wonder the price of housing went so high. It's no wonder. Now it's back to 6.4, and I'm still laughing going, that's not expensive. That's normal. Yeah. That's normal. Yeah. So, you know, it's just where we are. So, no, asset allocation for older people is very critical, and there are alternatives now, which is a good thing. Jim, thank you so much. You're right in the heart of the financial district yes, right we here are. in Cyrus. Yes, we are. All right. we, you can't miss us. We're on Main Street. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you. It's always good to talk to you. Thank, thank you, you so too. much. Thank you.